Listen up, folks. <clears throat> this might be the most important video that I ever bring you. And I'm going to have to get up to get my reading glasses so I can read this read this for you because I want to read it word for word. Um, I have enough pairs of reading glasses and I usually have a pair right here, but yesterday I rushed out for was my it was a lunch date as my birthday. So I rushed out and I don't know where I put I got I know where two pairs are, but I misplaced a pair. And uh I think my uh my old briefcase here I like this thing but it's it's pretty much shot. I don't think it can be stitched up. I actually will save that because I like it so much and when I get down to my old seamstress she says if there's something you want to save bring it to me. I think I'm going to bring this one to her. Hold on. I'll be right back. Lorraine, what a good girl. Come on up here. Oh, yes. Okay. You made your appearance. Oh, yes. I know. Oh. You give me a kiss back. Huh? Okay. Can you back off without hitting the, the kennel door and disturbing my desk? Uh-oh. <laughs> heck with that. She's going to stay here for a little bit, huh? Yeah, such a sweet girl. I've got to get this video going though, because I want to get out and get her running at the least. I got a lot to do though. Yes, you can do. As you can see, it's like you know the nose goes under the hand. She's so powerful, just flips the hand up there. It's like you're gonna pet me. Yeah, you're gonna pet me. She's so powerful. It's just like, oh yes. Oh, no teeth. No, she's got to do those little love chews, and I don't allow that. Okay, Lorraine, off, off. <laughs> Good girl. Okay, folks, I'm, my, my breakfast and her breakfast are sitting there, and I'm going to try, try to modify my, my regimen. As I've gotten older, I've gotten a little sloppier, and I want to go back to the hard, fast discipline that I did back when I was a, a Sikh. Yeah, yeah, okay. This is important. And I, the purpose of this video is to tell you why you, you do not have a Second Amendment, why we no longer have a Second Amendment. That's the reality, and you need to accept that. You don't have a Second Amendment. You've been tossed a bone, it's a frigging bone. And so I, I haven't read this enough, I have two different versions of the Constitution handy. I wish I had the other one handy. Uh, Galco includes it when they sell you a holster or something. And I don't like it as much. Oh, yes, I like the cover better than this cover. Uh, but the problem is it doesn't have the annotations this has. And this has just enough annotations to tell you the full truth. The other one is put out by the constitutional people who are controlled opposition, to be quite frank. They've got all this stuff set up so that you think that you're being a patriot and you, you're doing this because you've got the Constitution, but they don't tell you the full truth, even in this one. This thing was published downtown in, in Phoenix. I actually went to the publisher a while back because I liked it so much, so I went and visited them, and I bought a few copies back then. And they didn't charge me much for them, and I probably should go back down there and see if I can get some more. But I would like to actually, maybe I should talk to them about modifying this to make it a little bit more accurate. So let's go right to, and I'm not going to cover the footnoted parts. We're just going to go after one thing in particular. Uh, no, I don't have this highlighted. This is too important to highlight, to be honest with you. And I don't have it dog-eared. Uh, you do. Oh, by the way, the law of the land is very important because you are under the law of the ocean. You're under admiralty law, the law of the seas. I told you, you've been deported in place, and they brought a jurisdiction over and superimposed it upon us. And these courts, these court systems, the court systems we have, are all part of the slavery system. It's that bad. Okay. 
this is very important because we're going to have to actually practice law individually to, to get our freedoms back to assert ourselves. Okay, article, article, general index, articles, articles. Uh, they would not ratify this without the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments. I'm so glad. And by the way, the first 13 amendments are legitimate and legal, but you and I aren't using those. No, we aren't. And that's the problem, is that the original 13th Amendment passed in 1812 was overwritten by that horrible attorney for the railroad system who became president, who realized that the 13th Amendment, as it was ratified, made it illegal for him to hold office. Actually made it made it strip him of all citizenship here. Okay. Good God. Where is the Bill of Rights in this little thing? <laughs> That's funny. Okay, I'll look up here. Jury rights, law of the land, give up your rights, pet da, da, da. But the Bill of Rights is on page forty nine. It's got a lot of pages in it for a little booklet. <clears throat> Bill of Rights, as provided in the first ten amendments to the Constitution of the United States, effective December 15th, 1791. And it's important because the Supreme Court recently gave a very good ruling. Uh, Clarence Thomas wrote the opinion, and he has uh, established his place in history forever with that. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. And as it says Article 2, which doesn't say the Second Amendment, but this is Article 2. It should be the Second Amendment, that's what we call it. I guess maybe we're mistaken to call it that. A well-regulated militia. Stop right there. That's all you need to know. You don't have a Second Amendment. You were stripped of it. And I'm here to tell you how and why. So that you can realize that all of this stuff that's going on has been very unconstitutional and been, has been used by, utilized by the evil ones, these families. And it's not the Jewish families, it's the eight Roman families behind the scenes who use a lot of those Jewish families, by the way, they're in cahoots together. And there's a lot of bad guys among everybody at this point. A well-regulated militia. So are you a part of a well-regulated militia? No, you're not. Why aren't you? Because in 1902, and this is according to my old skeet and, and, and hunting friend, uh, Wayne Stackhouse, who was the sole survivor in his platoon in Vietnam, and he finally told me about that. Now, I've hung out with many great men, and the men who have been in combat, I don't ask them many questions. Uh, I'm real cautious about that. It took Wayne years to open up to me, and he finally told me what happened. And uh, I'm, I'm glad he, uh, he thought that highly of me to share his his secret. He didn't even tell his family about this stuff, I don't think. His wife might have known, but his daughter didn't know until I told her after he passed. A well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state. You don't have a free state either, baby. <laughs> the right of the people to keep and bear arms and the letter A on arms is capitalized, shall not be infringed. We don't have a free state and we don't have a militia. It was taken, about, taken away from us in 1902 and my hunting buddy, Wayne Stackhouse, bought into it, into it. He bought into the bullshit they sold us on this. Wayne was a lifetime member of the NRA. Um, just a really great guy. Um, 
I, I, he set an example for me to try and follow, which I, I never could measure up to. I never will measure up to. But he was one of the two men that set a, a high standard when it came to examples. My other, the other was my uncle, uh, who unfortunately was, uh, was basically kidnapped and uh, suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. And, and he was a good role model, but gradually in that second marriage, as he deteriorated and succumbed to his wife's constant pressure, uh, he wasn't such a good role model. Not he was, that he was ever really a bad one, but he just lost, he lost himself. He wasn't himself. So my buddy Wayne and I were I probably skeet hunting in the winter, uh, Fort Richardson Army Base. Um, yeah, if it warmed up, but much above freezing, uh, we, we'd go out and we'd shoot skeet. We, we had a good time. Nobody else was out there. Uh, it was it was wonderful. And uh, he told me that the Dick Amendment in 1902 of 1902 provided for us and assured us that our our Second Amendment rights would never be taken away. And that's how they sold it to us. That's how they got us to buy into it. It was a grand deception. And what the Militia Efficiency Act did is it ceased, it stopped the militias and it combined them into the professional National Guards. It took the militias away from the states and away from the people. You had state militias and you had regional militias. And I, you could say they were private militias because the, the government didn't do anything with them, had no authority over them. Uh, I cite Green, Ethan Allen and his Green Mountain men as an example. And they took Fort Ticonderoga from the British. That's a very famous story, and I've mentioned it before here. The fact is, the founders never could imagine a nation without a militia. Without our militias, they couldn't imagine us being a nation. And the nation, the militia, is tasked with two things. And I pointed, and it's in here twice, I pointed it out to my buddy, the, uh, the Army Ranger, and uh, he corrected me. It's in here more times than that. I haven't studied it like I should. I will study that and get back with you in another video. But the main thing is that a militia is necessary. And what were the two tasks for militias? Guard the borders. You're not allowed to guard your border, are you? I told the woman who should have been governor of Arizona, I told her an email. I says, if you want to be governor, I told her, just make one announcement and then go home. She was spending all of her own money, self-made self -made woman for sure, spending all of her own money on her campaign for governor of Arizona, and she was running in the primary against Terry Lake. Lorraine, good girl, good watchdog, yes, good girl. And sadly, the, uh, the head of the Republican Party decided they weren't going to have debates, or Carrie Lake would have lost, and she wouldn't have run for governor. Um, I don't think Kerry Lake's going to win this election. Um, and I, I, I just don't think she's going to win it. I think that this woman Z for Arizona, Paula, should have been given a chance. But another woman who was head of the Republican Party at the time, she decided they weren't going to waste any money on debates that Carrie Lake was the candidate, and that's all there was to it. Well, Carrie Lake was not the best candidate. She was, she's not, she's not a conservative. She worked in the media, part of their mockingbird apparatus controlling us. Yes, she handles the media well and masterfully, probably almost as good as Donald Trump, but that doesn't amount to a hill of beans right now. And we were deprived, the whole nation was deprived when they put her forward for governor instead of Z for Arizona. 
instead of Paula. Paula, if you're out there and you hear me, run for governor again. Run for governor again. That woman who acted as a gatekeeper, who wanted to run the, the state from behind the skirts of Cary Lake, she's no longer there. I think she feared you because she couldn't control you. And I told this, I told you, I told you, I'm going to try I'm talking to you. Why not? I told you, all you had to do was have one press conference and make the announcement that you were going to make history. Because Arizona, as the last state on the continent in 1912, as the baby state, never had a militia. I told you that to call for, I told you to tell the people, make the announcement, when you're governor, you're going to establish the Arizona militia. You wouldn't do it because you were afraid of bloodshed. That's the problem with women leaders. They don't want to actually face things, not firmly enough, or else they're really too damn bloodthirsty. They go way too far. They, mm -hmm. they don't modulate themselves well enough. And we know that from when the, uh, the Israelis started drafting women and they didn't like them in the service because they couldn't control them. They would get too carried away, too vicious, too violent, too bloodthirsty. Mama Bear has got some extra capacities given to her by Creator Fathers specifically to protect Baby Bear, even if it means going against Papa Bear. And you think humans are different? <laughs> Our founders never could imagine us without having a militia. But we've lost our militias. Therefore, we have no Second Amendment. It's gone. And as, a, as part of a result, they're jacking us around. They've made criminal things that are constitutional. They've made us They've made as many as they can of us into criminals. The United States of America has more people incarcerated than any other planet on the earth. Free, huh? Free state, huh? Yeah, right. So what I get with Lorraine... Lorraine, quiet. Tails wagging, she's happy. Yes, and the hackles are up. Good God, you really are a bitch. I'm not spading her. She's going to stay a breeder all of her life. Dogs have more value that way. If anything happens to her, she's got more value. But on top of that, if this society goes down, and we're going to need puppies. We're going to need dogs. We're going to need the Belgian Malinois and the other working get dogs. And so I want her around because I got a feeling she's going to make a really good mother. Maybe she'll stop licking me so much. So you don't have a militia. I don't, uh, the, the militias that are around the country have been vilified. Oh my God, he's a member of the militia. The militias should be lifted up and regarded highly. And there's another reason to do this and to have a militia. And this is psychological in nature. If you have a militia, that means a man has got perhaps people underneath himself, perhaps he has some authority, but it definitely means he has superiors. So he is under authority and he's got superiors that hopefully give him good guidance if he doesn't quite know what to do. If he's stuck with a problem, he can turn to them for help. Come on, Lorraine, kennel. Kennel, down. No, kennel. Down. <laughs> I can barely hear her subtle growl growling. I've got new I've got my hearing aids working again, but the Bluetooth on them really sucks. I'm gonna call up the manufacturer and tell them about that. I'm I'm, yeah, I'm gonna tell them what else I don't like about the hearing aids, but they're so good. They're so fast. I mean, I hear things that I didn't even hear when I was a child, I swear to God, yes. Now, you don't have a Second Amendment. You need militias. 
militia has the authority to defend the govern to defend the borders. And when I asked uh, a friend of mine invited me to her district, uh, devout Republicans and dumbasses on top of it. I finally decided to, to put my hand up there and ask a question. The congressman finally called upon me. As I know, I'm not to say my to say my whatever precinct. This I'm not voting in this goddamn state. You know, I vote in my own state. Anyway, I asked the gubernatorial candidates, would they commit to forming the Arizona militia if they were elected and everyone agreed to it. Carrie Lake wasn't there. Actually, there were no gubernatorial candidates there. I asked the attorney general candidates that were there if they would commit to defending before the United States Supreme Court the establishment of an Arizona militia and I talked with those people and they agreed. It was defensible. They could take it to the Supreme Court and win. We need our full Second Amendment. We need our militias. And as I was saying, the benefit is psychological. The psychological contract and the fiber of America, it's been destroyed. They took apart the undergirdings of our society. They destroyed the fabric of our society in many ways, not just with their perversions. But bit by bit, they've whittled at it for 200 years. Actually, they've been here for longer than that. They were here back in colonial days and they've been going after us the whole time. George Washington approved their presence here. Biggest mistake he ever made so, the other thing that your militia does is it quells riots, rebellions, insurrections. And by the way, when you're operating as a member of the militia, you are defended. You are defensible. You're, you're defended. Your actions are defended because you're acting under the proper authority of the Constitution. From the get-go, baby, 1791. We need our militias. Had Z, had Paola, taken my advice, she wouldn't have had to spend another cent on her campaign. She could have saved some bucks. That would have been heard from one end of the country to the other end of the country. Listen to this crazy woman. Listen to this crazy businesswoman. Listen to this crazy Republican. Listen to this crazy Italian. Italiana. I love them. Lived there for a year. Got educated in Italy. She would have been so notorious from one end of the country to the end of the other end of the country that she would have become the governor, men would have moved here specifically because she was going to let us defend our own borders. She was going to let us defend ourselves. Something you women do not understand out there. And you ought to mind your own business and put your nose out of it. If you're a wise woman, you let your husband lead and take the front on that like he was designed to do like he's supposed to do with the division of labor. He's supposed to be the front man. He's supposed to be your protector. He's supposed to be in charge. But now you know better and you don't want no damn confrontations. <clears throat> you don't talk about this stuff. You don't want to do it. You want to cave. You want the smooth way. You want the easy way out. Until it goes too far and your children are threatened and if you're of the right mind you're not all doped up and you're all screwed up and so full of yourself and centered on yourself and if you understand what your biological imperative is, what your mission is, you will, you'll, you'll start a nuclear war to defend that child of yours. 
I'm not saying you don't have a place. You have an incredible place. And the culture I grew up in, we put you all on pedestals, which was a mistake because now you, you put yourself on pedestals. And I'm sorry, the squeeze is, the juice is not worth the squeeze, whatever. It's just no good anymore. They have destroyed the ability for us to form families, the ability for us to pair off. Ladies all want to dominate. And when they uh, insist on this or that, I mean, I'm sorry, I watch, I watch and there's only a few wives that I see that really uh, know their proper place and, and they understand. They gotta watch their husband's backs, very important. Or they've got to get down there in front of him actually and, and protect his throat, protect his vitals, protect his heart especially in this society in which women have become so predatory that a, a man, and that's been going on for a long time, a man can't defend himself against a woman. His wife does it for him. You think that's not a real proper job? Wow. A wife establishes her territory clearly and defends her husband. And she's in able to do it in this, the culture I grew up in. And a man, we can't do it. The woman's word is always taken over ours. Anyway, I think that's part of the worship of the goddess and part of the queen of heaven. Yahweh doesn't like us worshiping the queen of heaven. This is a longer video than what it needs to be. And, the, and I, this is why and how we no longer have a, a second amendment and we need to establish it as fast as we can. I'm sure you'll agree that it is imperative that we take away the imperialism from the central government and we take it back again. That we reestablish the law of the land and throw out these maritime law bastards in their corporate courts for profit that exploit the hell out of the rest of us with their corporate attorneys, their bar association bastards that rule us in place of their king and their queen in England and keep us enslaved. I hope I've done my job properly today. I would like to be a member of the militia in good standing. That requires me to mind my P's and Q's. It requires me to actually uh, uh, submit to the authority of of another man who hopefully is has got higher standards and is sharper than I am and understands things better and can actually help me and guide me when I have an ethical dilemma, a moral dilemma, a problem. When I need to have some guidance, when I need to be corrected, you see, there's no man who's not going to want to be a part of the community and regarded well. Because when you're highly regarded, you're defended. Your brothers will show up and surround your house and watch your backs. And as Mike, Mike told me, Mike Harris told me, you know, if you see that SWAT team out there, you should be out there shooting those bastards in their backs. I really didn't like that suggestion at the time because I tended to revere the police. But at this point, they're wearing black. <clears throat> That's important. And I tried to point this out to the police. They're jackbooted thugs at this point. The only guys that should wear black should be the SWAT team. And they shouldn't. They've got to have better... They, they should have psychologists helping them out, telling them, hey man, you don't need to go in there, guns a blazing. Just surround the house and wait them out. If there's no hostages, who's he gonna hurt? Himself? And what's that gonna cost you? You wanna lose one of your men? And I don't care if you can, and you wanna destroy the house? And you wanna waste your ammunition? You need to act in, with wisdom. May Yahweh bless.